When we ponder the question of what is consciousness and how it arises from the brain, so if we try to answer the hard problem of consciousness and what are the origins of consciousness, a very close idea that comes around very quickly is that of emergence. What does it mean for a property to be emergent? What properties would we call emergent in that sense? It means that we have some kind of a higher level property that comes about in a complex system which was not present at lower levels. Let us take some examples that many of you have seen in YouTube videos. For example, in nature, you can see these strange and beautiful patterns that emerge in a flock of birds, in flocking of birds the so-called murmurations of starlings, for example. We also see this in complex systems like tornadoes or hurricanes. Some of the more controversial examples of emergence are, for example, uh, quantum entanglement and space-time in the physical science. There are two types of emergentism and two types of emergent properties, the weak and the strong. Emergentism. In the weak emergentism, this kind of new higher level property that spontaneously emerges from the lower, lower levels is unpredictable. It is something new, something novel. But it is not unpredictable in principle. There is only, only an epistemological limitation to our knowledge that perhaps we could not deduce from the, the knowledge about the properties of lower, level, lower levels that this kind of property, property would arise at higher levels. There is no new ontologically new, ontologically novel properties or entities coming about. In the strong version of, uh, of emergentism, this is the case, this is the claim. This type of entity that comes about at the higher level of organization is totally ontologically new and could not be predicted even in principle. Why is this important for our discussion about consciousness? Exactly because some philosophers argued that the only example, perhaps, the only genuine example of strong emergence of ontologically novel properties or entities, objects, in the universe could be consciousness, could be a subject of experience, for example. Now, the problem with strong emergence is that we expect some kind of continuity to exist in the evolution of life, in the evolution of the universe. So this kind of abrupt eruption of novel properties of novel entities that have not been present before, that come out of nothing for, in a way, is very problematic. And it is a question, why should we expect that even consciousness, which does not seem to fit very well into a naturalistic picture of the world and universe, why should we even think that consciousness is this kind of a brute fact that comes about from nothing into the naturalistic universe. But why is that so? Why would we think that consciousness is so different in some way from other physical processes that we see? So for one, consciousness has this kind of quality to it, qualia, the, the famous concept in consciousness studies and intentionality. There is also, we have a genteel experiences. We think of ourselves as beings that have free will. How is that possible in, a, in this kind of a naturalistic outlook on the world? One also big problem is the unity of consciousness. It seems to us that our conscious experience is unified in a way that is totally different from other complex systems and cannot be divided. Although there are, again, those unusual clinical cases 
for example, the split brain cases, when we could argue that uh, patients have two kinds, of, two consciousness in, in the brain. So among those philosophers that have entertained this idea of emergence or have argued that uh, subjects of experience or conscious experiential properties emerge somehow from physical systems are C.D. Broad, for example, uh, E.J. Lowe in modern times and Martin Niederrumelan. Among modern philosophers that are serious about consciousness and the existence of consciousness in a physical world, among physical processes, are those like Galen Strawson and Philip Goff. And they have argued for a different position at the physical and ontological position on the problem of consciousness, on how consciousness arises. So in order to evade this need uh, to, to postulate brute emergence in a physical world, certain philosophers trying to keeping up with this kind of continuity that we want to have in the evolution of life, in the evolution of the universe. And this is what also William James argued for in his theory of consciousness. In order to evade bringing in emergence, brute, strong emergence, this, these philosophers would argue for a position that is called panpsychism. And that is that some kind of a mentalistic or consciousness-like property is already present at lower levels of organizations. So, of organization. So nothing new really arises when we get to the macro consciousness, so to speak, when we get to human beings or animals and the human brain. So in order to have this kind of continuity between different levels of organization, we would say that proto, proto-conscious properties or experience was already present at the fundamental levels.